Okay, so as far as um, Canvas goes, I up I uploaded the grades. If there's any mistakes, um, let me know, and I can change them. The I put in all of I put in up through chapter six, so up up through actually well up through chapter five because chapter six your problems your in chapter problems as well as your um, homework problems at the end of chapter six will be due by midnight on Monday. We're gonna kind of finish up chapter six today, and then we're going to. Um, and then Friday we'll do some problems in class. So that's that's what we're going to do. And I have your take-home quizzes up here, which I'll hand back at the end of class. So what I want to start with is the um, our basic definitions here. So as far as chiral centers go. What is characteristic about a set of enantiomers? In terms of the relationships of the chiral centers configuration of the two molecules. Right, that's one definition is they're non-superimposable mirror image isomers. As far as that impacts the chiral center or chiral centers, what does that mean? If I had a molecule that was, let's say, 3R4S, in terms of having two chiral centers of those configurations, what would its enantiomers chiral carbon configurations be? It'd be what? That's the total number of stereoisomers that are, are available. What I'm asking is if we have if I have a molecule that's 3R4S, what, what are the configurations of its enantiomer? The enantiomer would be 3S and 4R. Because an enantiomer, enantiomers have every single chiral center having the opposite configuration. So every single chiral center has the opposite configuration for enantiomers. Okay. So every chiral center or chiral carbon have or has opposite configurations. Okay. That's the that's the operational definition of an antimers that we're going to need to use today and Friday. Okay. And I think I've said that a couple of times in terms of the last couple of days. Okay, does that make sense? Then let me ask you in terms of diastereomers. If I had a 3R4S, what would be an example of the diastereomers configuration? And again, what's its operational definition? Yes. Okay, so as far as a diastereomer goes, we could have 3S, 4S. Are there any others? The 
three, four, three. Okay. Are there any others? Three R four S. Three R three S. I can't have that because they have to have they have to have the same numbers. There aren't any more. I don't think. Right? No. So what's the operational definition there? Diastereomers must have. I'll start you out. At least. Nicole? So one chiral carbon, at least one chiral carbon the same, and at least one opposite. In both of those, in both of those examples, bless you, we've got for the first one, we've got the 4s being the same and the 3r being opposite. In the or the 3r, 3s being opposite, bless you. In the second one, we've got the 3r being the same and then the 4s, 4r being opposite. So when you have two chiral centers. You have four total stereoisomers because it is two to the n. For every molecule, for every one of those four, it will have one enantiomer, and it'll have two. It'll have the remainder as diastereomers. So in this case, if there's four, one of the three is an enantiomer, and the other two are diastereomers. So we need to know these operational definitions, and there's one more, in order to answer the kind of problems that we're going to answer. And the last one is, well, what's a meso compound then? In its definition. A meso compound has what? What's a stereogenic unit? Mm. Anybody want to help her? What is this stereogenic unit of which I've never spoken? It's true, that's the book definition. Well, what's what is a stereogenic unit? Take a guess. No, it's gonna ha it's has to do with it has to do with R and S, and it has to do with enantiomers and diastereomers. But a stereogenic unit is a chiral carbon. So I would say two or more chiral carbons. And then we have to remember, well, what's a chiral carbon? It's got four different groups attached to it, no mirror plane that cuts through it. So two or more chiral carbons. And then what was the rest of the book definition? Okay, and it's achiral, which means it's not chiral, which means it is superimposable on its mirror image. How about this? It has two or more chiral carbons and a mirror plane of symmetry, such that it is not chiral. 
meaning that it is superimposable on its mirror image. So a meso compound does have chiral centers. It's got to have at least two. And it has a mirror, mirror plane of symmetry that cuts the molecule in half. But that mirror plane cannot go, any carbons that that mirror plane goes through are not chiral. So it has to have, those chiral carbons cannot have the mirror plane cut through it. So these are the operational definitions we need to have. Because we're going to talk about relationships now between two molecules. If I give you two molecules, can you give me their relationships? All right. Is everybody kind of with me here? So in the textbook, stereogenic center is a chiral carbon. Now, let's say I give you And we're going to go over different ways to do these problems. Let's say I give you I give you these two molecules and I say what is their relationship? And their relationship can be one of four things. They can be the same and not meso. They could be the same meso compound. They could be enantiomers and they could also be diastereomers. So those are always going to be your four choices. Same not meso, same meso, enantiomers or diastereomers. So give me some give me some thoughts on how you're going to solve this problem. So we could determine R and S configurations for both. If they're the same, then that would be it would be the same they would be the same molecule and not meso. So we could determine R and S for both and determine whether or not it's this, whether those configurations are the same or not. If they're the same, it's the same molecule, but it's not meso. And we know it's not meso. Why? Why is it not meso? Because it's only got one chiral center, and to be meso, you have to have two. So I would eliminate the same meso compound right off the bat. And what else would I eliminate based on the fact that this only has one chiral center? What else can they not be? Diastereomers. Because diastereomers and meso compounds are going to require at least two chiral centers. So if you only have one, it can't be either of those. So we're basically down to it's either the same and not meso or it's and an, they're enantiomers. Okay. So that's either A or C.
Now, are there other ways bef besides going through RNAs that I could tell whether these molecules are enantiomers or whether they're the same? Well, I mean, I could put them into Fisher projections, I suppose. And if I put them into Fisher projections, I'd end up doing pretty much the same thing, which is, can I align these molecules so that they're exactly the same? Or can I align them so that they're mirror images of each other? Now, that's going to require a number of rotations, right, in order to do that. But I could do that. I could see, are they mirror images, or are they, or do all the groups line up in exactly the same position? Now, I'm starting out with two molecules in exactly the same orientation. So in order to make the mirror images, I'm going to have to rotate one of these groups in the plane so that I've got in the plane and then in the plane over here so that the two figures are mirror images of each other. But another way I could do this problem is I could do group switching. I could turn the left molecule into the right one. And if it takes me switching two groups one time, they would be You've answered too much. Sarah, can you? Sarah, what do you think? If I have to switch two groups one time, what happens to the configuration? Is it, is, it, is it the same or is it opposite? If I switch it just one time? Only once. So I'm gonna, if I switch, if I had to switch two groups one time to make the left into the right, do they have the same configuration or do they, do they have opposite configurations? Are you saying only two No, 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 I'm switching two groups. So in other words, let's say that I want to make the left into the right, so I'm going to switch the BR and the CL. If I switch the BR and the CL and it made the left into the right one, then, it, then they would be the same. So I'd switch two groups one time. That means their configurations are opposite. And so if the configurations are opposite, those two molecules would be they would be an antimers. If I had to switch two groups an, an even number of times to get the left into the right, <coughs> then what would be true about their configurations? They would be the same, and so then the molecules would be the same and not meso. So here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you different methods that you could use that might be faster and more efficient than determining R and S for everything. And R and S will work for everything but a couple molecules that I'll show you. But if I have... But if I have to look at these two, here's what I'd do. I'd say, okay, let me switch the BR and the CL. There's one switch. Is the left one look like the right one? No. What do I have to do? I've got to switch the CL and the H. So now I'll switch the H and the CL. So now I made two switches. And now the left one looks like the right one. So what does that mean about these two molecules' configurations? Their configurations are 
the same. So they have the same configuration, which means they are A, the same, but they're not B, so. And if I determined whether these were R or an S, the first one, the one on the right is going to be R, and the one on the left would be R as well. If you went through and you did that. And I looked at the one on the right because the four group is away from me. And it goes bromine, chlorine, methyl. So it's going clockwise, so that's how I knew the one on the right was R. So you kind of see what we're doing. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the chiral centers. Are they the same in both molecules or are they opposite in both molecules? And then I'm going to use those definitions that I just showed you in order to determine whether they're enantiomers, diastereomers. And meso would mean that there'd have to be a mirror plane in the molecule but I need two chiral centers to be me, so. So, how about another one? How about a Fisher projection? Oh, but how about this one? And what, I, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the ins and outs here, and then on Friday we'll practice these with some practice problems in class. So I'll give them out. You'll work on them. You'll tell me what the answers are as you get them done in your, by yourself or in groups, and then I will check them. And when you get them all done, then you can leave. But try, it'll be a long problem set, so... Now, here's what you can't do with this one. Oh, somebody tell me about this. Can I eliminate some choices in this one? What choices can I eliminate? I can eliminate B and D because I've only got one chiral center. So that means we're back to A and C. Are they the same, not meso, or are they diastereomer, or are they enantiomer? Sorry. Now, when the molecules are not in the same orientation, you can't group switch. So, in this case, having a Fischer projection versus a tetrahedron, you can't group switch these two. So, here you have no choice but to do R and S. When the molecules are not in the same orientation, then you have to do R and S. Or you could put them into the same orientation, but to put them in the same orientation means that in your head, you can see how to make a Fisher projection into a tetrahedron. So unless you can do that, you're stuck with R and S. I mean, I, can I do that? Yeah, I could do that. It would look like That's what the one on the left would look like if I made it a tetrahedron. Because when it looks like this, if I tilt the chlorine, 
until it's in the plane of the pa until it's in the plane of the screen. The bro it's like this. They're sitting. They're like this, and so when I tilt it forward, they go like this until it's a tripod on the floor. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't spent a little bit of time on our VR system, which maybe if I get a chance, I can make a little video and kind of show you how to do that. Because you really have to kind of see it in three dimensions in order to see that happen. But you tilt if you made if you make a model model and look at it in a Fisher projection, you're just going to grab the top back one and flip it up. But anyway. If I'm stuck with RNS, I'll give you a minute. What? It, I'll give you a minute, and I'll set this up. Because what I've what I've come to the conclusion is I need more participation points. And the only way I get participation points is if I ask you questions. So your answers are, so whichever way you want to do this, you can use my molecule here, but you're going to have to put it into this orientation first. So if you do this with R and S, are these the same or are they in antimers? A or C, that's your, that's your answer. Those are your answers. So. Yeah. Can I switch this one into a Fisher projection? Yes, I could. No. No. So, I don't have a I don't have a model. But I could switch this one Remember, the Fisher projection looks like this, with the dashed it there. So if I, so imagine this bromine and this methyl group. If I twist it a little bit, now the bromine and the methyl group are both towards me on a bold wedge, and then the chlorine's like right behind me. And so now, if I take that hydrogen and I tip it back, the hydrogen would go here. The methyl group would still be on the right, the bromine would be on the left, and then the chlorine would be pointed down. So this would be a conversion of that tetrahedron into the fissure. And it's kind of the opposite procedure of taking the fissure and tipping it up. So, so what I need to do is I need to make a little like video of that that would make it a little bit easier to see. But if not, if you don't want to mess with putting the two molecules in, you just got to determine R and S. And that will work for a molecule like this. But group switching won't unless they're in the same orientation. So the question is, are they the same meso or are they the same, or are they an anti, or are they, are they an anti -mers? Did everybody answer? Because you have to answer for me to then go back later and click and it'll show me that you participated. That's how I got the participation points. There were seven. I did this seven times. I'm going to be doing it almost every day 
if I remember to. Because if I don't, then we'll go long stretches where I don't. All right, let's see what answer do we have. We have, oh. <laughs> we've got 15 and 14, an even split. Okay. And nobody's got, feels the need to switch. Okay, so we have to determine R and S. So for the first one, and I'm going to deal with with these two right here. These were my unmodified ones. So first priority group, BR, second priority group, CL, third priority group, CH3, fourth priority group, hydrogen. So we've got a four, a one, a two, and a three. Is four pointing away from me? Yes, because it's on a dashed wedge, so I don't have to do any group switching. I should probably caution you that when you do a lot of problems and you have to group switch most of them, that's what you do in the that's what you do automatically in the second step. You need to take a step back and go, oh, I don't need to switch anything, so let me go right to R and S. So now going from one to two to three is counterclockwise, so that one is S. Right now, the one on the right, I've got to put the hydrogen away from me. So I could do that by rotation. I could do that by group switching. Um, let's just say, for the sake of argument, I rotate like this. I rotate the hydrogen back. I'm going to put that one over here now. So I'm going to grab the BR. And I'm going to rotate the hydrogen back, the chlorine to this position, the methyl group to that position, the bromine stays the same. The fourth priority group is now away from me. It goes from one to two to three. That is still counterclockwise, so that is S. So that makes these ones A the same, but not me so. So these are kind of tricky problems simply because if you have no choice but to do R and S, you have 50% chance of making a mistake. Because if you get one of them wrong, obviously you're going to get the answer wrong. Okay. All right. Does that does it make sense to everybody? Particularly the ones that had one of the chiral centers in an opposite configuration. So everything's based on the configuration of the chiral center. So let's make it a little more complicated. Let's now do two chiral centers. And I'm going to go ahead and do these in Fisher projections. So I'll put a CH3 here, an OH here, a hydrogen here, a chlorine there, a bromine there, and an H there. And then over here, I'll put a, we'll put the H there, we'll put the OH here, and we'll put the CH3 here. We'll put the bromine, the chlorine, and the H there. So here are two molecules with two chiral centers each. And again, same thing. I need to know, are they the same not meso? Are they the same meso compound? Are they diastereomers? Or are they an antimers? Well, let's just talk about this for a minute. And then we'll go through how, how would I solve this. And there's different ways to do that. My first thing is, does this molecule have the possibility to be meso? No. It doesn't. And here's why. Because in these kinds of molecules, the way you're going to get mesos is you're going to have you're going to have a mirror plane that cuts through the molecule this way. That's how it's going to be meso. So if the molecule has the potential to be meso, 
all three groups up here must be the same as all three groups on the bottom. That's the only way you're going to get that mirror plane cutting through the molecule in that direction. Because if the mirror plane cut through the molecule like this, vertically, it would go through the two chiral centers and they ain't chiral anymore. Because they'd have a mirror plane cutting through them. So the only way you can get this to be chiral is have a mirror plane right there. The only way you can do that is to have the same three groups on the top, the same three groups on the bottom, so that you can line them up. Now in this case, is this molecule chiral? Well, what you have to do is you've got to rotate the three groups on top, rotate the three groups on the bottom, and see if you can, see if you can align them. So how about I leave the top carbon the same, H, OH, CH3, but for the bottom carbon now, let's see if I can line up the groups. Now, in this Fisher projection, this is kind of a flat Newman. And what I mean by that is the three groups on the top carbon, you can rotate like this. And the bottom ones you can rotate. So I could rotate the H into the CH3, the CH3 into the OH, and the OH to the bottom. So I can rotate these in a Newman projection. I can rotate these three groups into each other because essentially what you have is if I look at this end on, I would have a Newman projection. that would actually look like this. It would be an eclipsed Newman projection. And I know it's eclipsed because all of the bonds are in exactly the same orientation, which means that they're lined up right on top of each other. It was kind of like the, saw, the way the sawhorse was, except my sawhorse, I was looking at it from the side. And now I'm kind of looking at it from the top. So that means I can rotate these three groups into each other. And I can rotate the top three groups into each other. So my initial confirmation that I showed here did not show the mirror plane. So I have to rotate them, see if I can line them up. I did, there's the mirror plane. That compounds me, so. Make sense? Because after I rotated it, I kind of got this like people's eyes immediately glazed over. Maybe it's the heat of the room. Maybe it's, a, it's 845. Or maybe it's just like, whoa, what happened? But does that kind of make sense? And again, if you, if you have models you could you can lay them down and kind of get a sense of what it looks like. What I can do is I'll I'll make some time to maybe make a couple videos here with looking at the molecules in the three dimensions. I think I think I can do that. I think I can do it where it's just where hopefully it'll give you a sense of three dimensions.
maybe. I might have to put it in I might have to put it in stereo vision. And if that's the case, you might have to look at the video on your phone. And if you ha and I have some five dollar goggles if you want to borrow them to see the three dimensions. But most people were able to see it without their phone because they don't want to put the goggles on. Because that looks just too stupid. But I'll try and do that so you can kind of get a sense of if I flip the molecule up, this is where it, this is what it looks like. Now on online there is already in today's folder and then also back on last Friday's folder. There is a step-by-step -step how you convert a Newman or how you convert a Fisher into a, like a Newman projection with the model showing on paper. Okay, I do this. Here's what the model looks like. I do this. So it it has, it has that's online. But I'll try and do this. But does everybody kind of see with a Fisher projection with two chiral centers, you, can ro you have free rotation on the top. You got free rotation on the bottom. So when I rotate it, if I line up the groups this way, it's meso. So where was I before we sidetracked here? When I looked at these two molecules, do they have the possibility to be meso? No, because the top three groups are not exactly the same as the bottom three groups. So I cannot line the molecule up to have a mere plane cut in half. So as soon as I see that it's not meso, it makes the problem a lot easier. Because now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to compare the top carbon to the bottom, the top carbon to top carbon. The, they have the same groups, the bottom carbon to the bottom carbon. They have the same groups. So now the question is, are the top carbons the same or opposite? Are the bottom carbons the same or opposite? So what about the top carbons? How am I going to determine whether they're the same or opposite? I could do R and S on both of them, right? That's uh, that's not an efficient use of our time. Plus it's plus it's going to introduce some potential to be wrong. But then again, if you get the top one wrong and the bottom one wrong, you still might get it right overall. But we, that's not the way we want to approach this. So. What could I do? I could do group switching. Right? How many switches would it take to get from the left to the right? Two? So if I switch the H and the OH, then that puts the OH here and the H there, and then I've got to switch the H with the methyl in order to make it look like the one on the right. So it take me two switches, which means the top carbon is the, the top carbons have the what configuration, same or opposite. Same. Now what else could I do? I got three minutes, that's all I ask. Well, I'm gonna ask five, because I'm gonna go over a couple minutes, but if I get full three minutes here, then I won't. So, because I could make two group switches to go from left to right, the configuration has this, their configurations are the same. I could also do this. What if I rotated this hydrogen up here, the methyl group over here, and the OH over here? Did I line up? the two groups in exactly the same position? Yes. So they're the same. If they don't line up, then by definition they're opposite. So if I can only line up two of the groups, well, I only line up really one of the groups, then they're opposite. So the top carbon is the same. How about the bottom carbon? Same or opposite? Same. Same? Do we all agree with that?
what's the relationship between these two molecules? Same not meso? Diastereomers? And antimers? Kristen, you were going to say? I thought it, was, I thought it was something else. thought it was something else. We didn't say. Like I thought it was um, the same meso. Same not meso. Yeah. Okay, same not me, so how many people agree? Anybody want to disagree? Okay. So when both of the chiral centers are the same, it's the same molecule. What would happen if one was the same and one was the opposite? What would they be? They'd be diastereomers. Now, what if they were both the same meso compound? or same and meso. If they're both meso, they're the same meso compound. And then we have to work through the permutations of, well, what if one's meso and one's not meso? And then what if neither one of them are meso, but they could be? The meso, not meso, means that all I did was I switched one of the two chiral centers. I, I changed its configuration, so it's not meso anymore. So usually when you have meso, not meso, they're diastereomers automatically. So when we have these kinds of problems, I'm going to ask you, what are the stereochemical relationships? And so you have to look at the configurations of each of the chiral centers. And then you have to go exact back to where we started. What are the definitions? And it doesn't matter if you determine R or S. You just need to know whether they're the same or opposite. That's what you need to know. All right? So... I'll have, a, I'll have a sheet, multiple sheets of problems that we can do on Friday to kind of reinforce this. And if you have any questions about if something didn't quite make sense, email me or come see me. Otherwise, that's what we'll do on Friday. And then you can keep kind of plugging away on your Chapter 6 problems.